Hello and welcome you with me on the German watchmaking channel. What we have here today is something rather unusual for watch repair restoration channels. It's an Omega Electric and as you can see the casing and band are in pretty rough shape and that is exactly what I'm gonna address here with this project. Here I'm already taking apart the watch, took the band off and the spring bars inside here. There's some kind of glue or residue inside and the band is scratched, the crystal is scratched. But in order to proceed we have to take off the case back. And for that I have a tool. This here is just designed to take off the case back of screw back cases. These metal parts are supposed to fit in between the lugs in order to fixate the watch while the case this, the case bag is removed. So I chose these small ones here. And now the case bag can be screwed off and lifted. Which gives us an opportunity to look at the movement inside. And as we can see it's a quartz movement. And like many other manufacturers, Omega decided to utilize the tuning fork for their movements. And this one here could be considered the truffle mushroom under the tuning fork movements. It's designed by Max Hetzel, who was previously developing engineer at the Bulova watch company. And for those of you who have no idea what a tuning fork movement is, it is a tiny resonating metal fork equipped with magnets on each end that interacts with driving coils surrounded by fine wire. Powered by the battery, it produces a fluctuating magnetic field that attracts and repels the magnets sustaining its vibrations. This self-regulating mechanism coupled with precise coils ensures pretty remarkable accuracy and resilience against external disturbances. And it actually doesn't tick, it rather hums and thus drives really smoothly and it looks like a fluid motion and as I'm saying that you can watch me take off the case clamps and the screws in order to take the movement flip it on my watchmaking cushion and free up the case from the movement itself there we go and I'll just as is put it under my plastic compartment for safekeeping and turn my eyes to the case and yeah it looks pretty dirty the gaskets old gaskets have been dissolved there's a lot of gunk scratches dirt the crystal is extremely scratched. Here I'm taking my case back tool again because there's another inner ring that is connecting the two parts of the casing together with the screwing mechanism. It's pretty cool. And this is the old gasket from the case back. I mean, that is definitely pretty gross. But yeah. After some time, I will get it away. Now this is a press, crystal press. It helped me get the old crystal or mineral crystal out of the casing. And yeah, this gasket also needs to be replaced with a new one. And so does the mineral crystal. I think better than getting a new mineral crystal here is to get a sapphire that is not going to scratch that easily and that's exactly what I did and this means we can already turn our side to sanding getting out the scratches and polishing the case here in this process I'm now taking a so-called Manhattan wheel 
which is a rubber bound compound that takes out deeper scratches and smoothens the material. It's pretty good for solid steel. But you have to be careful not to take off too much material. And then I'm moving to a cotton wheel with some polishing compound made for solid steel. This is giving the polished shiny touch. And if I'm done with that, I need to tape off with some thermo thermostatic tape the parts that should remain shiny and the rest will be brushed and get a satin satin finish. to be really careful here on the clasp I also taped off the sides because I wanted to achieve a satin finish satin finish in the middle and have the sides brushed in this case I have no idea if this is the case in the original but I wanted to achieve this look here I'm just brushing teeth and with some dishwashing fluid, some warm water to get the polishing compound off and then it goes into the ultrasonic with another cleaning fluid and look at the water here. Now heavily breathing, putting this on some paper to dry. And this is the new gasket for the crystal. Just have to place the inner shadow ring inside. Press it in place. And once that's done, the sapphire crystal can take its place on top of the sandwich. Now this is the bottom part of the case. And I'm going to put some silicone grease on the border of it where it connects to the top part of the casing. Just so it's more watertight. I think that's a good idea in the end. And now the two parts are screwed back together. Now just blowing some air. To get no dust under the crystal and I can softly place it on top and then with this press that looks like a really sophisticated tool I'm gonna fasten it inside the case oh. Yeah, I mean, this press is really not, not good, but it works. Need to be gentle, but the crystal sits super flush and can take place on top of the movement again, which is still humming along, just like we left it. Just need to give it a little, yeah, there, sits back. Not servicing the movement will not keep me from greasing the stem. And now the fun part, putting back the case clamps. And the first one was kind of finicky. But there it goes. So uh, They're also kind of deep in there. But yeah. after the first one it got easier. Also filming this, I'm pretty far away from the screw. So just guessing. Oh, but look, this one already went in way easier. No worries. I wouldn't cut out any failure. And here the third. Just perfectly put into place. And 
So I have a new gasket since the old one was already some paste and I'm greasing it with some silicone grease. Putting it back on the case back. There we go. Placing it on top. And now we can firstly tighten it rudimentally with a wooden stick and then take out the big guns. Just taking my time with this. Making sure everything is safe and secure. And then we can screw it down and make it kind of water resistant. And so here we have this one. It was mostly about casework and polishing. It's also a very fine craft and a big part of watchmaking in my opinion. And I might have gone a bit too far with this polishing job. But for me it was just about challenging myself to take a watch in extremely rough looking condition and turn it to something that looks kind of new. And I think the watch is in much more wearable condition right now even though it might be a little bit over polished. I'm still very excited with the result and since it's a hobby I think that's all that counts. But without keeping you much longer from this epic before and after, see you in the next video. Bye!